This tutorial explain, explains how to use these uh, DT71 Mini Digital Tweezers uh, from Mini DSO, Mini World Brand. Uh, this is a multifunction measure tool um, that uh, could uh, be used for measuring different kind of values. This is the box that goes inside and uh, this is the nice thing that is inside of that box. These are the tweezers, the test arms with uh, batteries inside. This is the positive electrode, red, and the negative one blue and here is an OLED uh, screen that is a controller okay and inside is an indicator when charging uh, there is a touch button here is a capacitive touch button and here inside you have diff different things one is this cable I will explain what is it and this uh, replacement of terminals okay so, what could we do with, uh, with that? Uh, one, this cable uh, is for two purposes. One is charging. As I mentioned, the batteries are inside here. And I could just put it inside. And I connect it here. And just use one of the typical USB-C cables. And just a plug here and then I see here the voltage okay you see is 5.16 and uh, the LED is red so it's charging when it is charged fully charged this one comes uh, off also this cable uh, is uh, used for up, uh, upgrading the the version of the firmware here inside. Okay, you just connect this cable to the to the uh, computer, and uh, in the computer you see uh, just uh, uh, USB uh, drive, and and you go to the web page of the of the uh, of the manufacturer. You download the last version of firmware. You just put that file and the drive that appears when you connect this one to the to computer and that's all you just reboot and and that's all okay so uh, this is all from this and uh, what you do in order to use this thing is to just plug okay and in the moment you plug it it just starts version 1.0 this is the version of the firmware this tutorial is about okay so i prepared this setup for testing this uh, or, or showing how how this uh, these tweezers works okay and uh, basically these tweezers have uh, you just switch this this one on plug in this or when it goes off because it goes automatically off by default after 60 seconds you just uh, put the, the tweezers together the tips or you just move the the, the thing okay and, and it switches on uh, it starts in a mode that is manual mode there are uh, four uh, four menus one is to measure the manual mode like is this this one okay and uh, as you see here or you should see when okay you see it is in manual mode and is measuring resistance okay so um, I could just measure a resistance here and it says uh, okay I will turn this so I see it okay you see about 1k I could then uh, just tap one time and it says DX is diode so the direct voltage okay you see it says 190 volts I tick again and says um, 
This one is uh, Alexis for inductance. So I measure an inductance here and it says 1.12 million and Henry's. And uh, there are some other, let me see, I'm going too fast here, RX, DX, capacitor. So I go to the capacitor and I measure it's uh, 4.20 microfarads. And this one other is polyester one is 3.68 nanofarads. Okay. Um, this other one measure frequency. And at this moment I have this uh, frequency. So it's 30 megahertz. Although the specification says it, it could measure up to 20 megahertz. The reality is that I, I was able to measure 30 megahertz as you could uh, probably uh, see here, okay? So I could not just do film exactly over here, but you see 30 megahertz, okay? So really it's uh, capable of more than in the specifications. And if I go further, I just get a VX that is a voltage is uh, continuous voltage and uh, I could like uh, measure this one that is 5 volts uh, just a second you see it's wait a second sometimes because the, 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 the uh, contact is here sometimes you just touch by default and it changes from one sort of measurement to other uh, is a pity of this thing that you have to take care of that okay um, okay there is five volts and this one is 3.3 volts you see 3.3 volts if you measure in the wrong way I will take this one okay and uh, uh, for some reasons I pushed it again okay uh, if I do on the opposite side I get this negative it means that it is it should be the positive here and the negative here that's that's all okay so take care with this thing when you touch here around uh, it just start changing from one uh, to the other okay Okay, so as I mentioned, it was in the manual mode. There is an auto mode that is very convenient. You just push during a while and it says identify. And here is an A and it means that it's in auto mode. So you just go here and it detects what are you measuring. So it's directly says about 1k ohms this is the 1.90 volts this other diode is uh, 668 millivolts this one is 4.22 uh, microfarads this one is 3.68 nanofarads this one is 1.12 million Henry's with about uh, let me see something like three ohms or so is the second measurement and it is uh, the only thing that you could measure in auto mode you could not measure frequency and you could not message uh, uh, measure voltage okay the third uh, menu when you click here do you know well says signal generator and it starts with a sign. Yeah, because this one is also a generator, 10 kilohertz. Uh, you could change that in a file that is inside. There is a configuration file when you connect this one to the computer. I will show you later. You could change the frequency of this one. There are no um, uh, menus here to change that from here. You have to do that in the configuration file. So this one, I just prepared the scope here. And when I click here, just see is the sign one. 
Um, let me see if I could show you. Oh, so sorry. Uh, identify signal generator. Okay, the sign. And here is the sign. You see sign here. And if I click, you have the noise, 100 kilohertz by default, but you could change also. Um, I'm not sure. No, this one, I think you could not change it. It's the default and that's all. If you click again, there is user. I will explain that. This, this function, I generated that one. I will, will explain later. You could create a, any function you want in this configuration file. And this is a pulse at 10 kilohertz by default, but you could also change that in this configuration file. Okay. And the fourth uh, menu, when you click it here, says calibration. You just uh, keep it and it says close tips, please. So you close the tips and it says keep close, calibration, open tips. So I open the tips, keep open, save data. So I just tick and save data and it goes to measure directly. Okay. Here you could see the configuration file I mentioned. That is when you connect this uh, DT71 uh, to the computer, you see a drive and inside the drive there is this cal.ini file and uh, inside this file this is by default what is in that file and uh, there are several commands i will show some of them and then here is the user waveform okay here is where you could change the waveform and i will provide you a tool to uh, do it more uh, in an easier way than just changing manually here uh, as you could see, you have this sleep time, that is the time of uh, the seconds after uh, which the, 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 the tool will switch off if you do not use that. So this is the tool I am providing you uh, to generate different functions. This is just a uh, sign function. It should be in uh, values of uh, between 0 and 3. Uh, uh, bolts. Okay, so uh, this uh, tool has, uh, you have 100 values. This is what you have to create, 100 values. And uh, it, it will create these 100 values between 0, 1 and 3 uh, bolts. Okay, and uh, what I created there, here is just a function sign. And uh, this one is a uh, uh, just a conversion from this value to the hexadecimal value. This one creates this box and uh, this is what you have to copy and paste this user, user waveform way form, instead of the one that is in the in the call.ini file. Just keep a backup of that call.ini file if you damage something, okay? Also, I created one for the sawtooth uh, very useful triangle, but you could do whatever. You just change the values here, or you create a function, or whatever. Uh, values from zero to three volts, and it creates. You see here how it all will show, and uh, here is the code generated automatically. And this one is uh, for serial communication. I just wanted to send a couple of bytes as it as the uh, codes to C. And uh, this is uh, really what should be transmitted. And uh, I just created the values uh, here, three bolts for one, uh, zero bolts for zero. And it created this wave. This is the uh, two uh, ASCII code. And this one is the uh, less than, uh, code and it generated that one so I copied that in, uh, inside my my tool okay and that's all I, I changed the in that case the frequency for it to the to 500 Hertz 
to work is uh, a 9,600 uh, uh, bouts. Uh, it is really working at uh, 10k bouts, but um, as there are 10% uh, tolerance in, in this serial communication, it is okay. You could find this, this tool uh, in the, the video. I, below the video, I will put the, the address to to take it, this, this Excel file so you could change and import that. I will show you what happened when I connect the, the tool and, and get the data. Okay, so I use just this uh, converter um, to to access uh, the serial uh, port, and uh, what I do is is just I switch on this one and go to signal generator, and I go to this uh, user. And you see it is just showing these two minus that I program to set. And that's all. It's a good tool and quite useful. Just take care with this button, okay? Because if you touch around, it is just changing it, okay? That's all. Thank you.